Amen. Good Sunday morning to you. Let's start off with our Bible confession. Let's go. This is my holy Bible. I am what it says I am. I have what it says I have. I can accomplish whatever it says I can through the power that works in me and for me to the glory of God. Amen. Hebrews, the 12th chapter today is our text. Hebrews, the 12th chapter, verses 1 and 2. Hebrews, the 12th chapter, verses 1 and 2, continuing with the theme for this year, the power of effective ministry. Say that with me, the power of effective ministry ministry Hebrews 12 verse 1 and 2 when you have it say word the King James version says wherefore seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses let us lay aside every weight and the sin which does so easily beset us and let us run with patience the race that is set before us. Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of God the Father. My subject today is the race to the finish line. The race to the finish line. You may be seated. The race to the finish line. And my thought derives from this. We must be in it to win it. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor. We must be in it to win it. I'm talking about a mindset. We must be what? To win it. Where are my children? Children, say with me, we got to be in the race to win it. First of all, I want to challenge every member to make a commitment to follow the ministry this year more closely. A commitment. I want to challenge you. Not compel you. I want to challenge you. How many are expecting a miracle or something from God greater this year than last year? I want to tell you, in order to get something you never had, you got to do something you've never done. And if you want to get something you never had from God, you got to do something you've never done for him. I want God to give me a place that I can feed the hungry breakfast, lunch, and dinner for free. But here's the thing. I don't want it to be funded by the government because when they come, I want to be able to tell them about Jesus. And while I'm spending my money, can't nobody tell me what I can or cannot say. Uh. So first of all, this is the motivation to me behind why I feed every Sunday morning. I get up, 5.30, make my hot meals. I wrap it up, I pack it up. I get out there and I feed. I'm not looking at the dopers. I'm not looking at the winos. I'm just looking at whosoever's hungry. Because too many times... The church gives people stuff based on 
how much I can influence you to come to the church. Ninety percent of the people that I feed don't know that I'm a pastor. They don't even know that I'm saved. I don't go. I don't go around taking selfies with nobody. Why? Because what I do in the dark, I want God to manifest in the light. And a manifestation that I'm looking for is a place that I can feed for free breakfast, lunch, and dinner. But because this is what I'm expecting from God, God is expecting me to do something on the line to get on that order to get to the purpose. See, we want God to do, God, I want, God, I, I want a car. But you're embarrassed about taking the bus. Lord, why am I on the bus? Who, why, Lord, while I'm on the bus, who can I witness to? So when I get a car, I can go in the highway, the hedges and the highways and the hedges and compel folk. Okay, I'm going somewhere. Huh? See, uh, uh, this is why I want to challenge you to follow the ministry more closely this year. This means committing to Bible study, Sunday school, and getting involved in the working of the ministry. Hmm. Whether it be the usher board, the planning committee, the choir. Stand up. Sister Tatiana, when I saw Sister Tatiana come to choir rehearsal, I was like, oh. she said, Pastor, I didn't sign my name on that list, but somebody signed me up, so I decided to get here. I said, okay. But I was sitting in my office. Go ahead, sit down, baby. I was sitting in my office and I heard the soprano part, and it was so crisp, I had to step out the office. I said, who is that singing? I said, that's Turtle. I said, oh my God, she sounds so beautiful. Then as the choir was going on, I said, well, I guess I got to get out here and sing tenor. Deacon Bird song. I said, I guess I got to get out here and sing tenor. Then I heard the tenor line. And I had to stop. I was like, sing, Sister White. I mean, she just. And even when I tried to get up here, she said, Pastor, go on, sit down. I got this. I'm like, well, I guess you do. She held it down. I was like, wow. But these people decided to do what? Get involved. See, a lot of you are sitting down on your gift and don't understand that the gift was not given to you, but it was given to you for somebody else. All right, all right. Whatever you can find your hands to do, but by all means, find yourself doing something this year. Never knew that Sister Torsha West was a praise dancer. But the first time she began to worship God in a dance, you could see the anointing. So much to the point that it, it, it inspired some of the young people. Oh, okay, 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 okay. So, so look at your neighbor and say, what are you doing? See, in the text today, the writer, we don't know whether it's Paul or whoever, well, we just say the ghost writer. The writer compares our Christian walk to a race. 
And we are the runners competing for the prize. The writer also gives the testimonies of those who have already run their race and have won their prize by persevere, persevering through the power of faith. And the reason why I had to stop right there, because I got to talk to my mothers for a minute. Got to talk to my mothers. Got to talk to my mothers. The race ain't over. Hmm. I know my mother's getting quiet. The race ain't over. Because you've been in the race a long time don't mean it's over. The Bible says, ye younger, you older, teach the younger. It don't mean you got to run as fast. Sometimes you have to walk people around the track. Oh, y'all don't hear but hey. Chapman, you hear me? Some see you already been walking folks around the track. But just because you've been walking for you ain't running no more, don't mean you ain't in the race. How many coaches you see on the starting blocks with Usain Bolt? They don't be on the starting. They stand behind and say, "No, you ain't. You ain't on the blocks, right?" But they still helping him win the race. Oh. Mothers look at each other and say, hey, he said it ain't over. Mm, 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 mm. Hmm. See, here's the coach. The coach is on the sideline. Why? Because he's won some races. Uh, uh, mother... Uh, Mother, uh, Mother Felix, you don't won some races. Mother Evans, you don't won some races. So you can tell the younger sprinters how to win the race. But first, you got to encourage them to get in the race. Uh, see, you can't win if you ain't in. Uh, uh, uh. Mother, they can't win if they ain't in. <sighs> Clap your hands right there and just give God some praise. That's a, that's a message in itself. <laughs> Pastor, where are you going? Because I want you to see the whole dynamics of the race. We've passed out a welcome to CEC. How we? How many have your have your ministry vision and your yes? I want every member to have it, even the guests. Hey Amen. I told them give give our visitor. You know what? Because everybody need to know. You know what race you in. That's why I told Ari, baby, <laughs> you didn't just haphazardly get here there's different races there's the steeplechase there's the 50 yard dash there's the relay race 4 by 400 relay I mean there's all kind of races but this is the race that God put you in over here at Christian Enrichment Center ah I was thinking about my nephew and he, he told me, he said, hey, you know, I'm getting baptized. I said, well, man, I thought I was going to be the one that baptized. He said, well, I, my friend here, he just, he just kept encouraging me to come to church with him. And so I'm getting baptized at his church and, you know, and, that, and I was like, okay. And I thought, I said, well, God, man, I wanted my nephew over here with me and this and that and while I was studying this text the Lord said there's different races for different people but see if you're a fan when you're a fan you're rooting for everybody (laughs) 
I said, when you're a what? When you're a fan, you're rooting for everybody. I don't even like you saying both. But he's so good, even when he races against the Americans, I'm voting for him. Because there's something about him. He's charismatic and it's not, not heady. He's just, not, I'm confident that they who trained me, trained me well. Oh, yeah. I'm going somewhere. We ain't there yet. We ain't there yet. We ain't there yet. So in the text today, the writer compares our Christian walk to a race and we are the runners competing for the prize. The writer also gives the testimonies of those who have already run their race and have won their prize by persevering through the power of faith. Uh, today we will explore our Christian walk from the runner's perspective. We watch the race on TV. We watch track meets. But have we ever looked at it from the runner's perspective? Hmm. We're going to see our race from the vision of the runner. But the goal is that you will understand how you can effectively run your race to achieve your glorious prize. <laughs> Listen to this. Listen to this. First thing, the Bible says, 1 Corinthians 9, 24, know ye not that they which run in a race run all? Meaning, everybody that's in the race is running. But only one receives the prize. Everybody's running, but what? Only one then Paul tells them, so run that ye may obtain. You got to be in it to win it. You're not just in this thing just to come to church. If that's your thing, you're in the wrong race. Matter of fact, you ain't even in the race. But this is what God told me on the way down here to rehearsal yesterday. He said while I was meditating and allowing this test just to, to minister to me, God said everybody's running somewhere. You're running to something, you're running from something, but everybody's running somewhere. That's what this text is said. Know ye that, that they which run in the race Run all? Somebody's running the race for Satan. They run into hell. And those of us who are running this race for Christ, we're running for the prize of the high calling, which is in Christ Jesus. That's eternal life. Not eternal damnation, but don't kid yourself. Everybody's running somewhere. <laughs> hmm. So run that ye may obtain. In other words, run with the purpose of winning. Why are you going to come to church and not get what church is all about? Oh. Why are you going to come to church and not give your money Give your time, but not get involved in what the church is all about. It don't make sense. Why are you in the race? There are some people that go to races for different, different, different reasons. They go to track meets to get women or to get men. Women go to track me. Ooh, look, did you, did you see them die? Ooh, he, ooh, he was running and he was looking good. Ooh. And the brothers be going, be like, man, ooh. When, she, when she was running, I was just watching her, them legs and that bump and all that. Ooh, wee. I, folks come to church for those kind of reasons. 
They show sure is dressed up over there. I'm going to go see what I can do over there. You know, I see that little single deacon. He got a job, and I see his tithe. He in the tithe line. Man, I'm going to go get me one of them deacons. People go to the track meet for different reasons. But the runners, the runners are very focused. They have on their headphones. They block out everything and everybody. They don't care what's going on around. I was watching the Olympics and watching Michael Phelps when that Australian was trying to punk him and all up in his face and doing it. And Michael Phelps had his beats on and he was just. And that dude, he was just like. And then they got in the pool and Michael Phelps whooped his behind. So much to the point after Michael Phelps won, the Australian went over there like, yeah, good. Michael Phelps was like. I don't get all excited when people tell me I'm anointed. Well, pastor, you so anointed. Well, I work hard. I study. I fast. I pray. So I expect to do what? Be anointed. Why? Because I'm in it to be anointed. Ah, okay, okay, okay. In order to run an effective race and obtain the prize, we must be effective in three areas of our lives. Get your books, get your paper, get your pens, get them, get them ready. Get them ready. Get them ready. In order to run an effective race. I don't just want to be in a race. I don't want, I, listen, I don't just want to be in a relationship with my wife. I want to have an effective relationship. I want people to see our marriage and see love, see prosperity, see gentleness, see how a husband is supposed to treat his wife and her, the wife how to submit to her husband. I get no amens. That's all right. That's all y'all. Y'all on a rough neck. Huh? Oh, Jesus. Because when I came up, Mother, Mother Chapman, when I came up, I didn't see much of that. Yeah, I even looked out. What couple could I put my hands on? This, that, but I know that. Now, now, that, that, that uh, I quit. I know y'all looking at me like, yeah, I couldn't find that in the church. I couldn't. It's no mark on nobody. It's the, I'm just talking about in my race. I don't want nobody to think, well, you what you no, I'm just talking about in my race. What I was looking to accomplish in my race. An effective couple. So I said, okay, Lord. When I got saved, I said, Lord, <laughs> I told my godmother, I said, why you didn't tell me? what I should and should not pray when I first got saved. There she is sitting right there. I went her, I said, I was all excited and I said, Gamma, I said, I told the Lord that make me an example. Here am I, use me, Lord. And she just said, hey man, yes son, you can do it. But she didn't tell me what came along with that prayer. Because all hell broke loose in my life. Everything that I thought I was going to. See, that's why I said on Wednesday night. Y'all got to get here on Wednesday night. Some of you have found Jesus through the Bible. I didn't. It wasn't I heard a word and got convicted. No, I met Jesus at the crossroad. I had a soul experience with Jesus. That enhanced my conviction. It enhanced. I don't I read the word because I love the word, but it wasn't the word that I was reading that saved me. 
Oh, y'all, y'all know that's, that's that y'all, some of y'all missing this. No, 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 no. It was, I didn't read the word and say, oh, so this is what, I, no. It was at the altar when I went blank and, and, and God spoke to me and said, if you say yes, I'll free you. Oh. And I purposed in my heart, oh, I'm going to try this thing. I'm gonna, next time I hear that voice say something, I'm going to say yes and see what happened. And the power of God filled me that night, that very night. I didn't have everything. I wasn't equipped with everything. But that was my, my, the start of my race. I was in the race now. I was in the race, still smoking my cigarettes. But it, oh, oh. Uh-oh, uh-oh. Well, pastor, you wasn't saved. Oh, yes, I was. I was in the race, still smoking my cigarettes. I, I, I wasn't never a drinker, but I was smoking my Newports and still buying them. But I was in the race. Then I realized the more I smoked them cigarettes, the more breath I need. And I was like, Lord, I don't want to smoke no more. He said, then don't smoke. And I'm like, well, Lord, what you mean? Don't smoke. He said, don't smoke, and then don't buy no more. Some of y'all in the race, and y'all turn, I just can't let go of this drink. Stop buying it. Don't stop going to happy hour. Oh, y'all don't hear me. I'm t- but I was in the race. But then I learned, in order for me to run effectively, there was some stuff I needed to do. Hmm. So, uh, in order to g- a- obtain the prize, we must be effective in three areas of our life. The first one is we must train effectively. Uh, woo. Train effectively. <laughs> in order to run the race God has set before us, effectively and obtain the price the prize we must train effectively tell somebody we better train effectively by training effectively I mean we must not only be hearers of the word we must be doers of the word also (laughs) The problem is that we cannot train effectively by practicing once a week. Amen, Jesus. Some of y'all just practice once a week, Sunday morning. I'm going to run a marathon. We're just going Sunday morning. Get ready. Worship the Lord. Sunday morning, I got my worship music on. I'm getting dressed because, whoo, and I'm going to get in this marathon and I'm going to win. No, you ain't. You're in the race, but you only practice once a week. <laughs> hmm. And that's at the park. Sunday morning service. You go to the facility the practice facility once a week to practice on Sunday you don't have no devotion time through the week no study time at home or on your break no workout when I first got saved when I go to the bathroom at work I took my Bible on my lunch break I took my Bible Every time I got a break, on my way home, I had, I, I had it on, on the gospel station where they was teaching the word. Not listening to gospel music where they were teaching the word. That's where I met Charles Stanley. That's where I met Dr. Chuck Swindoll. Ho, 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 ho. See, y'all don't even know about these folks. Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. That's where I met Pastor Jimmy Swagger. Oh, 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 oh. That's where I met Pastor Jim Baker. Oh, you talking about 
uh, Jim Baker, the one, I don't care what he did, what sin he fell into, that man was anointed. That's why I met Pastor Benny Hinn on the radio, feeding my, my, my spirit man with the word. I didn't agree with everything, but it was better than a hip hop, a heavy to the heavy, the hip hip a hopper. You don't stop the rock to the bang bang boogie. Say up, jump to boogie to the rhythm of the boogie to be. And some of y'all don't even know that where hip hop first started with the Sugar Hill Gang. But my life had changed from jamming to Sugar Hill than looking to looking to the hills from which cometh my help. My help comes from the Lord. Hmm. My college baseball coach, Coach Marty, said something to me in training camp one year that changed the way I viewed my walk with Jesus Christ. He said to me, Sutton, don't let anyone make you believe that practice makes perfect. He said, don't. He said, I see you out here. You're blocking pass balls and you, you're doing it with your back hand and your hands are quick, you know. I was a catcher. And so when they were, my hands were quick. He said, I see you practicing, but you're practicing the wrong thing. He said, and practice doesn't make perfect. I said, well, coach, what you mean? He said, it is perfect practice that makes perfect. He said, now, do you want to know how to perfectly block a wild pitch? I said, yes. He starts showing me. He got down. He said, get out there. And now try to throw something by me. Then I noticed he shifted his weight, his body in front of the ball. And then he used the chest protector to make the ball bounce out in front of him that he can still see everything that's happened in front of him while he go get the ball. I was like... Ain't nobody never showed me that. See, I got, I was in, invited to the team because of my bat. I can hit on left hand. I can hit right hand, power, you know. And just because I was a catcher, that was a plus. Then when he started showing me that, all that left, Everything that I thought I knew. See, when you come to God, everything that you think you know, you got to throw it away. When you, I'm talking about if you want to be effective. If you want to run an effective race, you got to throw away everything you think you know. That's why the writer said, let us lay aside every weight and sin which such so easily <laughs> hmm. when we perfect our practice and train effectively then we will have an expectation of how effective we will be in our endeavor to get the prize see now when that coach Marty showed me everything now it added another dimension to my game see that's why I was telling the mother see you don't know who you can help I don't care that you're not running no more, but every now and then, the coach, he'll walk alongside of his runner while he's instructing them what to do. I, 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 you hit that hurdle wrong. You just got to. But the coach ain't over there jumping the hurdles. Oh, y'all, y'all, I hope y'all getting it. And I'm not just talking to the mothers. I, I'm talking to those who have been saved. A while. Hmm. Hmm. The next area that we must be effective in, <laughs> I know y'all going, 
y'all, some of y'all are gonna be like, oh my God. But the next area that we must be effective in is our understanding of the rules. Uh oh. Ron, I know. I know, bro, pa. I know. See, <laughs> let me get into this because I got something. In the race, you must first know what lane you'll be running from, how far you're required to run to get to the finish line. See, nobody just walk up to the, yeah, yeah let's, okay, let's race. Let's run. No. First of all, we're going to, you, have, you, have you ever noticed been to a track meet, the first thing the runners do, they go to the starting line. They know, see, what lane have I been assigned to? That's why they got them numbers on their chest and their back. But those are lane assignments. Mm -mm. Uh -uh. You hear me, brother chairman? Lane assignments. You hear me, brother CFO? They're lane. See, it, it, you get up to the line and you know, uh -uh, I've been assigned lane two. <laughs> so then the next thing you must understand that there are limitations in that lane. You don't start off in lane two and then while you running, you just way in lane seven. That's why they are what? Clearly marked. And when you understand the rules, when you go to the starting line, that's the first thing you look. You start looking, okay, I'm on the inside lane. I got less distractions. Because the farther you out, the more distractions, more distractions you have. <laughs> let me get, let me. <laughs> you must understand that there are limitations and you just cannot run anywhere. But you must run the course marked out from you, for you beginning at the starting point. Because if you start in lane two, but you end up in lane four, you're going to be what? Disqualified. Uh-oh. <laughs> then you ran for nothing. All you did is exercised. <laughs> In our walk with Christ, the race that is set before, the Bible said run the race that is set before us. Run the race. It, did it say that? Let me read that. Huh, wait a minute. It says, let us run the race with endurance, the race that is set before us the race that is set before us if i'm running the 220 or the 200 in lane three that's the race that's set before me i don't go and get up in in the steeplechase or i don't go and get in the 50 yard dash that's not my race the race that is set before me is set according to my strengths. <sighs> Uh-oh, y'all missed that. The race that is set before me is set according to my strength, my gifts. I'm a hurdler, so I'm not going to be running a dash because my strength is Hurdle, because I got good time. It might not look like it. <laughs> Edwin Moses, he was the one of the most decorated hurdlers in Olympic. I mean, after, after you know who I'm talking about, Jesse O. But Edwin Moses, that's all he ran. He didn't run the 220. He didn't run nothing. All he ran was the hurdles. And he did it effectively. Oh, okay, okay. Hmm. The word of God also gives us examples of folks who ran races like us. Uh, <laughs> whoo. see if you read the word you'll find a, see I identify with David and Paul 
David for my heart, Paul with my encounters with God. I love David's heart toward God. But I most identify with Paul with his encounters. I wasn't on my way to, to kill no church folks like Paul. But I was high as a kite intentionally when I found Jesus. I mean loaded intentionally. I went and got high because I knew I was going to church. Just because my mama said there was a revival going on and she wanted me to, I said, okay, since I, you know, I'm going to obey moms, I'm going to get high so I can sit in church and trip. I'm talking about an encounter. I didn't read the word and say, oh, Jesus, I accept you because, no, it was an encounter. That's why I have infallible proof that God is real. I'm See, that's a part of my, what motivates me to run because I heard a voice one day say, if you say yes, I'll free you. And when I say yes, it opened me up to an experience with him like never before. So I can't deny him before you. Mm, mm, mm. The third and final area we must be effective in is, everybody say endurance. Mm. In this race right here, in this race right here, in this race right here, there is no room for slowfulness or short-winded people. People, well, the Lord has moved me to another place. And since when did you get a, a lane change assignment? I've never seen nobody in the history of the Bible have a lane changing assignment. Oh. And, uh, see, <laughs> oh, much have, I'm talking about in the middle of the race, Mother Evans, in the, in the middle of the race, uh, psh, time out. Time out. I think I want to run from lane seven because you're getting on my nerves. In the middle of the race. Well, listen, listen. You know what? I changed my mind. I'm not running 100. I'll be getting, no. I ain't going to run 100. I'll wait till the 440 relay. Ain't nobody want you on their team. If you quit the 100-yard dash, who going to have you on their team and they got to count on you? Oh, y'all don't hear me today. In the middle of the race, well, God told me that my time in the in the 4x4 four four 100 relay, it's different now. I'm going to run a 50-yard dash. You ain't even trained for the dash. You don't even know the rules of, oh, y'all don't hear me. How you just go, see, it's one thing to start a race. See, I don't care what, I don't care what I try. <laughs> I told Mother Chapman, I said, Ma, you sure he called me to preach? I was slaying across her bed one day. I said, Ma, you sure he called me to preach? She said, no, are you sure? I said, yeah, I'm sure, but I didn't know it entailed all this. See, what I start guessing, if, was I sure if I wanted to put up with what I was called to do? 
Ah, y'all don't hear me. But see, the race had already started. The gun, pop. I was already in it. But I saw, here's what happened. And this is what happened to folks. I want y'all to look at me, look at me. This is what happened. We start seeing folks go far ahead of us. And we start look, start like, oh, shoot. I'm so slow. Instead of just running our race, because pretty soon, they're going to start coming back to you. It's not that you change, their, change your speed. They start getting wind. <laughs> they got winded. <laughs> because everybody in the race is running to win, we cannot afford to be distracted by what other races are doing or how they're training for their race. Stop worrying about stuff like that. Some runners start out fast, but because they don't train effectively, they only endure for a while. For when tribulation or persecution arises because of the word of God, the offense knocks the wind out of them and they fall out of the race. Some runners practice good for the race. They hear the instructions from the coach and follow most of what is said to them but when they get started or they get to the starting line they become intimidated Whew, I'm running against Usain Bolt oh my god and it distracts them but not only who's running against them but the enormous crowd that's watching them some of y'all are stage fright Hey, Pastor, I don't want to say nothing because I don't like speaking before people. Well, Jesus said, if you deny me for men, you don't speak up for me before men. Uh, when you get to my daddy, I ain't got your back. Oh, y'all don't hear me. In my conclusion, but the runner who hears the instructions of the coach and he trains effectively, he understands the rules of the race and he perfectly practices all that is given to him. He's the one that's going to bear fruit of enduring to the end and receiving the prize for the race is not given to the swift nor the battle to the strong but he that endures to the end is the one that gets he's the one that gets the prize although we have to battle with our enemy and struggle with our difficulties while running our race that is set before us. <sighs> the race still requires effective training. The race still requires for us to understand the rules. And the race ultimately requires tremendous endurance. No one receives the prize just for starting the race. <laughs> Only one has the opportunity to receive the prize is the one that finishes. And I tell you this in my close. The way you start out in a race, whether you practice effectively, whether you know the rules and you work on your endurance is just how you're going to finish the race. Clap your hands and give God praise. The power of effective ministry. I decided